Welcome to the new Cyber Frontier, bringing you the latest news on the local Colorado economy and initiatives that focus on the development of cybersecurity economics. You don't have to be a computer or cybersecurity expert to get plugged in. Your host, Chris Gorog, brings it straightforward, asks the tough questions, and brings the cyber world to a level of understanding for everyone. Chris is personable and opens up with our guests on the issues we all would like to see addressed. You can find us on the web at www.newcyberfrontier.com. Now join our host as he introduces the topic for today's New Cyber Frontier. So welcome to today's episode of New Cyber Frontier. On this special Colorado update, we're going to talk about some news that came out on the 29th from the National Cybersecurity Center that uh, CEO Ed Rios had resigned uh, to pursue uh, interest of his own business. Um, and today we have a special guest and a special announcement with we have Vance Brown, the new executive chairman of, uh, or he is the executive chairman and co-founder of Sharewell Software. And in 2014, he was named Ernst & Young Entrepreneur of the Year. Um, Vance was also named the 100 most intriguing entrepreneurs by Goldman Sachs. And Vance is gonna take over the interim position of CEO for the National Cybersecurity Center. So without further ado, Welcome, Vance. How are you today? Ah, doing great, Chris. It's been quite a quite a 24 hours, or a little over since the announcement, but uh, I'm excited, and uh, yeah, I'm, I'm uh, very optimistic. Yeah. So we wanted to get out the message about what is happening, what you're about, and really just some excitement about things that are here to come with the National Cybersecurity Center and in Colorado in general. But first of all, Vance. Give us, I mean, I read your bio. It is truly uh, amazing. And I'm so honored to be to have you on and be talking with you and uh, have you as a, as a personal friend as well. But uh, give us your, your background from your words, how you got to where you're at. Because, you know, the, the startup Sharewell has been just an amazing uh, part of Colorado Springs as well. Um, so give us that background of how things came about in your life. Wow, that's a that, that's a question. I'll try to be as succinct as possible about <laughs> my, my life story. But yeah, it, it it does matter in terms of all our stories matter, right? In terms of how we got somewhere, because I'd have never envisioned you know quite this direction in my life. Let's say ten years ago, or five years ago, or a month ago for that matter, because this all happened so quickly. But it's very exciting. So I started honestly um, in undergraduate school. I had one of those moments where. Uh, and I, I, I went to uh, Wake Forest University. And it's a liberal arts school. But I had one of those moments, and we're talking about we're, I'm in the early 1980s. And, uh, you know, I always liked technology. I had a little programmable calculator. And I just had one of those classes where, um, you know, I, I, programmed a, I had a little program that I did in, in, in uh, an econ class, basically programming elasticity of demand. I showed my professor, and he was dean of the department. And you, you thought he had seen... Um, the most, you know, Sputnik, you know, some of the most <laughs> re remarkable things like, wow, I, I don't know what that is, but it matters. And I was just stunned because I kind of had that as a hobby. I always like, uh, you know, technology and kind of a gadget guy. And so that was when I realized that this, this whole world of information technology, computers, means something. And it's going to make a huge difference. So from there, I went and, you know, got a degree in economics and then computer science. And uh, from there, I really didn't want to be a programmer, so I thought the next thing I'd do is go to law school, which I did at the University of North Carolina and focused on intellectual property law. Um, and that was, you know, I, I loved the philosophy of law, but not so much the practice of it. We were representing young entrepreneurial companies, and I thought, wow, a lot of these guys don't have a lot of money, but they're having a great time. And so I quit very quickly, within a couple of years, got an entrepreneurial bug, started my first software company, and we had some success there. And then, um, honestly, uh, when I had an exit in, uh, from that company, and then we're talking now, that would have been back in 1994, um, when I had an exit from that company, uh, my wife and I thought about, well, where would we want, and we had a kid who's two, three and a child that was one at the time, and what a great opportunity to like look across the landscape of the country and say, where would we want to live? 
And we looked across the country and, and honestly uh, ultimately chose Colorado Springs as a place to start, you know, kind of reboot, reboot our lives, start over. It was a good time in life. We didn't know a soul, but we had heard about Colorado Springs and thought what an amazing place this would be to raise the family. Uh, and so, and, and that, was, that was 20 years ago, over 20 years ago. And I'm so grateful for that decision back then. Um, we then I got then got into starting a, or, or I was hi- actually hired by a guy by the name of Ron Munns, who is actually the founder of the Help Desk Institute, a software product. He's really an icon. Uh, he's the father of, of the Help Desk industry. I think he even coined the name Help Desk. And he hired me to be the CEO of uh, an IT help desk software company located here in Colorado Springs. At the time it was called Bendata. It had other names through the years, Front Range, Goldmine Software, et cetera. But that's where I first really got into, let's call it information technology in the whole field. And so I have literally been in that for about 20 years. But other activities I've enjoyed, Chris, along the way uh, in Colorado Springs, I helped start a charter school here in Colorado Springs called the Classical Academy. And that's, that's another one of those, let's call it entrepreneurial passions of mine. I'm really big in education. I'm real big in entrepreneurship. And certainly I'm, um, uh, you know, a hobbyist and, and have a passion for information technology. So I love Colorado Springs, still do. And um, honestly, always looking at ways to, uh, you know, progress uh, what Colorado Springs is and how it's recognized throughout the country and the world. Wow. So... That is an amazing background. We are going to come back in a couple minutes and talk about the vision for NCC moving forward. We'll be right back. We'll be right back with the rest of today's show right after these brief messages from our sponsors. Cyber Resilience Institute helps build strong cyber communities designed to prevent members from attack. Like building a neighborhood watch, it takes coordination and a sharing community to protect our identities and valuables in the virtual world. Typically, we hear that organizations know they need to do something to protect their cyber assets, but don't know where to begin. Let Cyber Resilience Institute help your community create an action plan. Cyber Resilience Institute will build your community or business marketplace so that it is designed to support a collective cyber defense. Contact them for more information at cyberresilienceinstitute.org. All right, so welcome back. We are talking with Vance Brown, the new uh, interim CEO for the National Cybersecurity Center. And Vance, you have, uh, before the, the break, we were talking about your background, and I know you are the uh, executive chairman and co-founder of ShareWell Software as well. So tell us about you know, your experience leading, you talked about your experience leading up to that, but how ShareWell is doing, what you've done with that company, and how that leads into uh, what we're going to be doing here. Oh, yeah, thanks, Chris. Sure. Uh, Sharewell, wow, it's another one of those stories similar to uh, when I talked about the Classical Academy. I never had the vision or that it would become as big of a deal as it, as it has. You know, it's one of those things, a lot of times we have visions as entrepreneur of what things can, you know, can occur within an organization, but sometimes they, they don't work. Other times they go way beyond what you ever think, imagine, or dream. That's been the case of Classical Academy, and that's been the case of Sharewell. So Sharewell was started by myself and two other co-founders, uh, Timothy Pfeiffer and Arlen Feldman, and we all came out of the whole front range days. Years later, after that, we got back together and thought, wow, this whole help desk industry has dramatically changed. Before in the help desk industry, there were no standards. Now there are actually standards and certifications and things we can build an application around using more modern technology, you know, the SaaS world, et cetera. And that was one of those things. Basically, we just wanted to, you know, have a company that we're passionate about and create a, create a job. But it actually took off way beyond what we'd ever think or, uh, or imagine to the point where, you know, we were 2015 uh, Colorado Software Company of the Year. We're the company of the year in 2014, I believe, in all of Colorado Springs. And uh, today we have partners in 30 countries. We have customers in 40 countries. And again, it's uh, uh, it, it's been it's been an amazing story. And I think we've done some great things for for the world in terms of IT, and certainly for Colorado Springs. We're delighted that we've provided hundreds and hundreds of jobs to Colorado Springs, and uh, we continue to grow. 
Uh, we have now um, gotten some major investors uh, in the company, institutional investors like KKR and uh, Insight Venture Partners. So we have the resources and I believe the passion and the DNA to be the world's leader in service management and help desk. And that is, that is an amazing uh, rise as well with ShareWell. So I'm hearing things that are so exciting in both the, the background talks that we've had with the NCC and hear from you directly today that we're really looking at an entrepreneurial spirit coming into this Colorado effort in the NCC itself. So tell us how everything you've pulled together is gonna, gonna pull into the Colorado effort in the NCC and uh, hopefully bring that entrepreneurial spirit to this, this community effort. Well, already, yeah. I mean, there really is there really is entrepreneur spirit to what we're doing, what we're trying to do in Colorado Springs. You know, like I share, I'm very passionate about Colorado Springs. In fact, a year ago, I stepped down as CEO and had a secession plan to bring in uh, a person who I thought could uh, be the next, you know, succeed to in terms of CEO to to scale um, share well. And after that, at that point in time, I was kind of thinking, like, what what can we do? For Colorado Springs to have it more as a technology hub, you know, and uh, you know, similar to a, okay, Silicon Valley, or more like an Austin, or even you know, Boulder and Denver. And I think, think Colorado Springs, like, have a, it's had this reputation where we don't know technology, and there don't, there isn't the same kind of technology entrepreneur spirit. And when I heard that kind of thing, honestly, it, it, it offended me. <laughs> you know, I'm like, what are you talking about? We've done been data, front range, share well, and I know there are other success stories, but I think it's a phenomenal place for technology. And I think Colorado Springs has this amazing DNA related to, you know, from the DOD to, um, you know, share well stories and more that we absolutely have that. We obviously need to accelerate it and incubate it. And so I was already on the path to uh, establish and have a, an accelerator incubator called uh, Exponential Impact. And given the, the focus that Colorado Springs is, is having from the governor for, to the mayor to, to, to a lot of this community that we wanted to grow in this area and be a hub for all things cybersecurity, um, the, it just made total sense that we were going to build an incubator accelerator called Exponential Impact for security technologies. And what that is is just think of it like what if we could bring the top, some of the top entrepreneurs from the, in the world uh, that are focused on security technologies to Colorado Springs and, and, you know, incubate them, accelerate them, make them become successful, and hopefully get them to come and stay in Colorado. Uh, Springs, Colorado and Colorado Springs. Well, then, you know, we were partnering already with the National Cybersecurity Center to say, hey, we need to develop a workforce for cybersecurity. If we're going to bring all these entrepreneurs in, we better have a workforce. And we better have, just like in the help desk industry, Chris, years ago, there weren't standards and certifications and all of that. And um, my founder mentor not only created that software company, but the Help Desk Institute, which, oh, by the way, is also located here in Colorado Springs, <laughs> coincidentally. And, and they had that similar, uh, let's call it, mission to provide education and training and certification and standardization and research. Uh, that's what the Help Desk Institute did. And so I've seen that, and I've seen it be, become a global success, and I, was, I have been excited that, that the National Cybersecurity Center is based right here in Colorado Springs and wanting to do the same thing that, honestly, I've seen happen before at a global scale. And so it just, you know, when Ed Rios resigned and I was asked by, uh, you know, Bob Hurst and, uh, you know, Kyle Hibble and uh, Cam Shockley Zalabak and others and supported by the governor and um, the mayor to step in and provide some interim leadership here, it was just like, man, I, I just got chill bumps. I feel like, man, I'm made for this <laughs> in terms of it for such a time. And, of course, I want to help uh, with not only the transition of whoever becomes the next CEO, but, you know, I'm an entrepreneur. We're not going to just sit idly by and uh, keep some status quo with what it's been doing. Uh, we're going to – we plan to do this amazing event in, on November 1st and 2nd at the Broadmoor, which is co-sponsored by the National Cybersecurity Center and Exponential Impact. We're going to have a, a dynamic, amazing event that's, you know, featuring, uh, you know, a speaker, General uh, uh, Petraeus, as we know, retired Army general and former director of the CIA and um, – you know, so an amazing speaker there. He's going to be interviewed by Governor Hickenlooper. Uh, it's, it's just going to be an amazing event that I highly encourage 
um, you know, the citizens of Colorado Springs and Colorado to come to because I think you're going to see uh, Colorado Springs is, is changing. And uh, this, what you call entrepreneur spirit, it's true. I think uh, we're going to have not only the great entrepreneurs come into this region, I believe, and some of the top security technologies in the world, uh, but we're also going to have, I believe, the education of the workforce and have the best workforce here. Um, largely because what I think the National Cybersecurity Center was already doing and will continue to do under my interim leadership. Yeah, well, let's take a break here real quick and we'll come right back after we hear from our sponsors. We'll be right back with the rest of today's show right after these brief messages from our sponsors. Over 3 million data breaches happen every single day. That's over 2,000 records being compromised every minute. So often, we focus on securing web data access. But what if the attackers are already inside, having gained direct access to your storage through data management software? When it comes to communications that go directly into your storage devices, make SNIA your first line of protection. SNIA's conformance testing limits outdated communications that are known to be used by attackers. It works continuously behind the background to make sure your storage is protected. To find out if your data is truly secure, visit our website at www.snia.org forward slash cyber test. So welcome back. We're talking to Vance Brown, the uh, new interim uh, CEO for the National Cybersecurity Center. And Vance, I know that you've just come on. You're drinking from the fire hose, I'm sure. Um, but you have you know, a large task ahead of you and some big shoes to fill with Ed Anderson. Um, what types of things do you see over the next, you know, coming weeks, month or so? And, and who do you want to, I, a lot of times you want to say, don't reach out to me right now, give me three weeks. And then, you know, I want to talk to different groups in the, in the area. What do you want to see as the, the timeline going forward here? Well, that's a great question, Chris. You're right. It has been a lot of drinking from the fire hose, which, just so you know, I kind of get a kick out of them. <laughs> the entrepreneurial spirit kind of gets, uh, you know, it, it can, uh, that, it's kind of fun for, for personalities like mine. Uh, but I do appreciate everybody's patience that, look, I got some learning to do. You know, I, I need to spend some time with our current team. Uh, you know, I'm thrilled that, uh, you know, people like Ed, Ed Anderson, you know, the Lieutenant General who's been involved, you know, practically, I guess, from the, almost the beginning here is by my side. Uh, I also have, you know, team members like Jen Ferta and others that, uh, that have some, you know, more experience than I do in terms of what the NCC is doing. Uh, you know, I'm trying to reach out to the board members and, and the governor to make sure that I'm hearing from them what it is that they want to make sure we accomplish as an organization. So that's, that's the first thing. I think the, the, the existing internal stakeholders, the board, the governor, the mayor, uh, the uh, you know, certainly the, the, the key staff, relationships that we have, you know, like with UCCS, there's a close relationship there, as you know, uh, with the National Cybersecurity Center and uh, some of the building plans they're working on. So right now, it's, I'm just, I'm in this, before I uh, have the temptation to go out and um, push, push it forward, which of course I want to do, I want to make sure that I understand what it is we have and where it is that this state wants to take it. All right, and then probably need about a month or so before you start then community in engagement. Any thoughts of what the, you know, who you'd want to reach out to at that point? Absolutely, I mean, there's some obvious ones. I mean, all of our incredible educational institutions in Colorado Springs and, and in Colorado, uh, that's, that, that's one. I want to understand what, what they're doing related to, you know, preparing a workforce, right? Mm -hmm. uh, I also would like to talk to, uh, key companies in, in Colorado and elsewhere who are, um, you know, concerned or curious about cybersecurity, and I'd like to know what it is that they need from a workforce perspective and also from certification perspective, standardization perspective, understanding perspective. Uh, Chris, I, I just really believe there's this massive, when people say cybersecurity, um, and I get it. I mean, you know, if I ask 10 different people or 100 different people, even within Sharewell, which is a highly technical group, what they think of as cybersecurity, I might get 100 different answers. Mm -hmm. So I think there's a, a, a big, let's call it, um, under, uh, education gap, you know, in terms of there's a gap of understanding of what, um, what, what is a gap of, of knowledge. 
which which is what the NCC is about. Well, I'd like to understand where it is. Like, what, what do we think it is? What do we think the problems are related to cybersecurity, and not, not only from industry standpoint, but from education standpoint, and um, and then what is, what is needed. You know, what 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 are they looking for? What are companies looking for? Uh, what's the gap in the let's say the knowledge gap with uh, elected officials? Like if they're out there, you know, creating legislation and trying to solve this from a you know from a, a government perspective of how we can respond and what we need to do. Um, you know, I think the NCC can do a great job of bridging that knowledge gap. And there's no shame in the knowledge gap. I think it's a global issue that there's this incredible emerging threat. Uh, it's certainly the greatest emerging threat, maybe the biggest threat today. Uh, there's some, I've heard some generals state that. Um, and, and yet, I don't think everybody really, you know, this, this is cyber stuff. They really don't understand exactly what that means. It's, it's one of those things, hey, we know there's a problem, uh, we, and we know it's important, but don't exactly know what it is. And mm-hmm. uh, we, we need to understand what that is from both industry, from government, from education, and make sure that, that the NCC can be a part of bridging that gap and making sure we're all, um, you know, take, solving this from a common direction. All right. Well, it sounds like a great uh, you know, approach ahead. In the next couple of months, you have your work cut out for you, I'm sure. So um, anybody listening, the, the, governor, the Governor's Cyber Symposium, November 1 through 3, check it out. There's links on the, the, uh, the write-up for the show. And Vance, thanks for joining today. Is there any other uh, near-term calls you need for help right now that you want to get out or anything you want? to uh, relay is kind of uh, in closing here. I just want to thank everybody. Look, I'm very humbled that uh, I've been asked to take on this interim uh, role and responsibility. Uh, Honored, but incredibly excited, mainly because I just so believe in it. I believe in it not only for the city of Colorado Springs, but for the state, uh, the nation, and the world, and how important it is. And, uh, you know, be patient with me for a little while here as I you know, figure out what's going on and, and do a lot of listening first. Uh, but then, uh, you know, just re- really would appreciate everybody's support because this is a this is a topic that really matters. And uh, just thank you. I agree 100 percent there. Uh, and thanks for joining today, Vance. Um, and if if anybody wants to reach out to New Cyber Frontier or Logic Central, we can definitely make the connection and relay on uh, if you want to use us as a connection point. But thanks a lot for joining today and everybody have a great day. The views or opinions expressed by me during this podcast are my own and are not those of my employer, Colorado Technical University. We hope you have enjoyed this episode of New Cyber Frontier. Remember to get involved. Often we think that someone else will handle privacy and security in the virtual world, but you are the only one truly in command of your virtual fate. Join our mailing list so we can keep you informed of breaking news and new releases. If you have an idea, if you have a question that you would like to hear answered, or if you want to get involved with our efforts, reach out to us at newcyberfrontier.com. We also encourage you to visit our sponsors' links as they are the ones that really make this show possible. I want to thank each of you for supporting the show, and we look forward to seeing you back for the next episode of New Cyber Frontier.